Hi, it's James and Watts. Today I'm going to be embarking on a new craft and that is ankle loom weaving. So I purchased an ankle loom kind of on a whim at the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival. It is an Ashford ankle loom and let's unbox it. Okay, here's what's in the box. So I have a, some assembly to do. And hopefully it doesn't require any tools or components that I don't have. Sandpaper. Not the sandpaper. Okay, my ankle loom is all assembled. I started reading, reading the instructions and felt overwhelmed and went on YouTube and looked up Ashford ankle loom assembly and there weren't a lot of videos. I thought there'd be more. I actually just assumed that Ashford would have an assembly video. They have plenty of like instructional weaving videos but I, don't, I didn't see an assembly video. So I was following the video of some other creator and a few minutes in I realized her video was from maybe two, three years ago and they've changed the design of this loom slightly. So I was like, oh, I actually can't follow this. So I just had faith in myself and used the written instructions and I think it turned out fine. Here's the loom. Wasn't anything too scary or difficult. Um, it did come with one washer that I did not use, and um, I later saw in the manual that this is listed as like a clamp, and I don't know if I was supposed to be clamping together these support sticks or whatever, but I didn't use this. I'm not gonna use this. So also, of course, I should have foreseen this, since this is all being glued together, it says to give it 24 hours for the glue to cure and uh, before warping the loom because warping is going to put tension on all these pegs. I wanted to warp it this morning, but I'm going to be good and wait for tomorrow. But what I think I can do today is make my heddles. Um, I know some people buy heddles for their ankle looms, and I was thinking about doing that, but I was too impatient to wait for an order. Plus, I was like, why not, for my first time using an ankle loom, get the full experience of learning how to tie my own string heddles. So I just have some white cotton crochet thread that I'm gonna use to make my heddles. I think I will use some of these pegs somehow as a guide to get the right length, if I'm not mistaken, and I think that's okay. I just won't be putting that much tension onto the pegs. So what I'm going to do, just to make this quick, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap between these three pegs the number of heddles I want to make. I, I think I want to make 40 heddles. <music> my finished tied heddles and tying them around these pegs allowed me to make them really uniform in length whereas the instructions in the pamphlet I think left more room for variation in the length 
but we'll see how this slightly longer than recommended loop does. And we'll also see how this kind of somewhat thin and weak crochet thread does, but I think it'll do the job just fine for probably for a while. All right, it's been 24 hours. The glue on my ankle loom should have had plenty of time to cure and I'm ready to warp and weave. So I spent the morning looking through some resources. I purchased an ebook copy of Annie McHale's book In Celebration of Plain Weave, and I've also been studying um, her YouTube video on an introduction to ankle weaving. I also went to Joanne, as you can see, went a little overboard, got a lot of colors of this DMC embroidery floss. It's not like the normal embroidery floss. Um, it's this kind that comes in these twisted mini hanks because it's a little bit thicker and has a little bit uh, more yardage than the smaller, more standard embroidery flosses. But I was kind of looking at the warp lengths you can get on this loom, comparing with the yardage of these colors, and I am a little bit worried that I could run out. Uh, of a yarn. Um, I, th I think I have enough to warp the pattern I want to warp, but I need to be careful about uh, which color I use for the weft, because if I use a ton of a color on a warp, I think I'd run out in the weft. But anyway, let me show you the pattern I've decided on. So I went through Annie McHale's book in Celebration of Plain Weave. Uh, there was a few patterns that spoke to me and I chose one and then she talks about this on her blog and her YouTube channel but there's this online ankle pattern editor, I forget the name of it but it's easy to find, where you can make your own ankle patterns which I'm sure at some point I'm going to want to make original ones but I decided to take one of her patterns but use this ankle pattern editor to adapt it to my colors so I could see how it's going to turn out. So. These are the colors that I chose. It's like a beige, a kind of sagey green, a lavendery purple, and a nice medium brown. And then here is my pattern that I'm going to follow for warping. Okay, so what I believe I wanna do, I'm actually gonna do this like this, is follow this, these top two rows, show me my pattern. I'm gonna start with the top row on the left and alternate from top to bottom. All the top colors get the heddle threads or get the heddles and the bottom doesn't, I believe. And I'm gonna follow this shorter warp pattern given by the Ashford booklet. Up over oh and like the pattern booklet says that you can add all your heddles after when i was watching annie McHale's video she said she likes to add them as she goes and i see no reason not to add them as i go so i guess it just goes like wait I'm scared. And then my second warp thread is another one of this brown, except it is going to go um, not over this peg. It's gonna skip that and go between the, the heddle holding peg and this one. Ah. And then I can just follow the um, follow the first one that I did from there. Crossing that cut end in front of the other one, folding it behind, pulling it through. Tightening it up on the peg, I fold this one in half, cross it, same move in front of the other. This is two 
Terrifying. Hey. Okay, you behave. So I feel like any madness that happens over here with crisscrossing threads is actually okay because everything's going to have to pass through this before it gets woven. And this, as long as this is set up correctly, like it's going to be fine, but I'm still scared. warping and unfortunately right at the end of my warping pattern I ran out of green on the last pass and I just tied in a couple inches of this extra this other color it's a dark green and then I had about three more passes to go on brown to finish the pattern and I ran out and tied in a darker brown so I don't know if you can see that but it will be visible like the green because I only added it in for the very end of the last pass would only be visible for that portion of the weaving. But the dark brown went around full multiple passes. So it'll be visible throughout the entire pattern. But it's my first time I can consider this just a practice piece. I just wanted to make bookmarks anyway, and I think they'll still be pretty. Okay. I Again, here's my pattern. Here we are, all warped up and ready to go. I've got my knots tied off here. Hope I did everything right. I guess you just go like that to change the sheds. And you can see where I've had to go to the darker brown at the end, and we'll just have to suffer with that. And I have these random knots that I'll probably just get woven in and be lumpy bumpy for when I change colors. Now I have a few other tasks to do. Okay, shuttle is all loaded. And the other thing I need to do before I weave is uh, I've seen it recommended a lot to use like popsicle sticks or something to get your weaving started where you have a hard edge to beat against for the actual start of the weaving with the yarn. So you weave in like three popsicle sticks or something. I don't have any pop popsicle sticks, so I'm going to use the box that the loom came in and I'm going to cut strips of this cardboard. Okay, I'm ready to try to start weaving. So I'm going to start by, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna have my under warp or whatever it's called in the down position. And then I'm gonna put in, yeah, so I want all of these threads down. I'm gonna put in my little cardboard stick. And then I'm going to put these in the up position and put in a second one of these cardboard sticks. These are bigger than I need. I could cut these in half actually and still do the job. And then, so that was, that was up. Now back down. And I'm gonna start weaving with yarn. So I'm gonna pass this through. 
Beep, beep, beep. And I want to leave a tail. I think what I saw Annie McHale do in her video is then weave in the, um, the tail for the second pass. Y'all, I'm weaving and it is scary. Ooh, I can already see a pretty pattern. Here we go, we have a belt appearing. Well, really this is gonna be a bookmark, but it looks so good. Okay, so I finished now my second bookmark. I don't know how many I'm gonna end up being able to fit on this warp, but definitely a few more. And I'm just gonna show you the way I'm going between them because I wanna leave space between them to like tie off knots and make fringe or whatever, which I don't know how to do that, but I'm gonna figure it out. I'm also gonna show you the way I saw to end a section of weaving on um, just some random YouTube video I found, but I, li I like it, it makes sense. I feel like it works well. So I just, let me see if I can remember how to do this, because I did the other one a few hours ago. I'm gonna trim my yarn and then I'm going to chain sheds or whatever it's called. And I'm gonna I'm gonna trim uh, a little length of this white. And let me make sure. Yeah, this needs to go down. So I'm gonna put in this white string looped over like this and pull a loop through and let it chill out. Yeah, I think that's right. Now change sheds again and take my brown yarn and weave her through. And then I'm just going to put the end of this brown yarn through the loop I made and pull through. Oops. I don't want to over tighten anything. And that supposedly is good to go. Now I think I can... My tension still feels okay, and I'm just going to go like that. And now I have four of these little cardboard things. I want to take my shuttle, beep, 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 beep. Shuttle up. I'm just saying words. I'm like, shuttle up. That is not a thing. This is the shuttle. When I'm pressing this up, I don't know. That's like, the shed is up. Don't ask me. 
this is not a tutorial video, right? This is just documentation of my personal weaving journey. This is the first weaving I've done except for like on a pot holder loom as a little kid. Now, okay, so I did four of these little cardboard inserts, and now I'm going to start my third bookmark. I have gotten faster as you can probably see. And now that I have a few rows of weaving established, I can actually remove these cardboard sticks. I love the way you can still see like the shuttle changes. <laughs> there I go again, the shed changes or whatever. But this is gonna get snipped and become a short little fringe. I mean, ideally. Um, but it is in the colors 450. Y'all know I love me a gold, or like a, like a goldy mustard. So it's, it's this one. And the color 4886, this one. So it's coming out way brighter. It's a much more raspberry color than it's showing up. These are both of All right, so I've done all the weaving that I can on my ankle loom. I think I've woven seven bookmarks. Now I need to do a little research on what to do next, but I believe I'm just gonna be cutting right into the warp and separating all my bookmarks, and then I need to look up how to tie it off nicely and leave some fringe. So that is what I'll do next, but let me just give you a little look at what we're working with here on the loom. It's so fun. All right, I am just gonna go for it and cut and try to figure this out as I go. I have seven bookmarks to experiment with and surely I figure out something I like. I did watch like two videos and I wasn't really finding one obvious video that was like exactly what I'm looking for specifically for like finishing inkle, inkle loom pieces um, for like tying knots on the edge. I think I can just do overhand knots close to the edge if I want like a edge without fringe and then I watched one video on twisting fringe which I think it made sense to me but now for the exciting part let's cut Wow. Check it out, check it out, check it out. This is cool. Okay, maybe I don't cut bookmarks and I just use this as a belt. So here's what I'm thinking. I tried the overhand knots on the end of this bookmark and I think it looks kind of crappy and lumpy and messy. I don't like how that finishing looks. Whereas this end, which has just been cut, I didn't do anything to it, I think looks really pretty. And I watched a few more videos and was thinking about how I've done the weaving. And I think because I started and finished each bookmark by doing a round with the tail really the ends of my bookmarks should be secure like in the future i might even do multiple rounds with the tails like do an extra one even rather than just the one round like if you remember when you saw me finishing the bookmarks of putting the loop of the white thread in and then cutting my yarn and putting my tail through that and pulling it back through the previous row of the bookmark yeah so Obviously, like, if someone wants to, like, take this and agitate it a bunch, they could probably make it look like crap, but as far as, like, normal use for a bookmark, I think this is good. Like, if I look between the layers, I can still, I mean, it's hard to even do that. You can see, if you get it right, the last row of the weft, but it's not going anywhere. So, I did already cut 
this one really close, but it also, so this one you can see better, maybe that you can see the last row of the weft going through there. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I think cutting this so short, it doesn't look very nice. And maybe I'll go back over with a sewing machine just so that at least on one side, it looks nice. And on the back, it can be sewn down, but I don't know. It's not that crucial. Anyway, for the rest of them, I think I'm just going to cut directly in the center of my fringe and call it good. So like here is that tail coming out of the second row of weaving. So it doesn't really lay nicely with the rest of the fringe, but I'm like kind of worried that if I cut it super close, maybe that is encouraging it to unravel. I don't know. I could also try just Oh my gosh, that worked really well. So just so it wasn't poking out of the side like this, I just took a darning needle and threaded it through the direction of the rest of the fringe. I really should have done that on all of them. Like you can actually see, like they all have this tail that comes out sideways. It was just really pronounced on that one, so I noticed it. But maybe it's still long enough to weave through. If I had a shorter needle, which I might have, I could do it. Sorry, I'm really backlit right now, but I'm too lazy to move. I just want to show you my other solution for these threads that are coming out of the side where I already cut them too short to put on the needle. What I'm doing is just inserting my needle. I think from this side is better because it's kind of coming out from that side. So it's coming out right there. And I'm just gonna insert my needle where I want it to go all the way to the eye. And then I can just stick the end through the eye. And that one was a bit far back. So now it's coming out right there. And I want to do that one more time. And now we kind of have all the fringe coming from the same direction. Okay, and here are all of my seven finished bookmarks lined up, and I am really happy with them. Okay, after three days of prep, weaving, and finishing, my first Inkle Loom weaving project is done. I have six bookmarks in front of me, and the seventh one already in a book, and I want to give my closing thoughts on this new to me craft. I overall really enjoyed it. I like that Inkle Loom Weaving is not too expensive, doesn't take up too much space compared to like a bigger loom kind of weaving. Um, I like the simplicity of the loom and of the weaving. I actually bought this loom and had an initial interest in an inkle loom to get into tablet weaving. And then as I researched inkle loom weaving, particularly thanks to Annie McHale, I realized how beautiful just plain weave could be. And I decided that that was a much better place to start for me than tablet weaving. I would still like to get into tablet weaving. I have fallen down a rabbit hole on YouTube 
for tablet weaving in the past, I really recommend the videos of Eloise of Finching Field, I think is her name. I'm gonna link below uh, Eloise's channel, Annie's channel, and I'm, I'm also gonna link the website that I was talking about earlier that you can use to create your own inkle patterns. It's really intuitive to use and a very nice tool. But yeah, this was really fun. I like that it didn't take too much time like one day was just setting up the loom, which I won't have to do again. Um, so yeah, just warping and weaving and finishing. I definitely want to do more plain weave projects. I think it'd be fun to make shoelaces, camera straps. I might make a dog collar for some friends or family who are dog owners, or do I have any cat owner friends who would love a hand woven cat collar? I'm sure I do. And ultimately, I, I might save this for last because it feels like maybe the biggest type of project and I need to like source hardware. I want to make a belt that I could actually wear because I do have at least one pair of jeans that don't really stay up too well. They're a bit too stretchy. And for the past like six months that I've had these jeans, I just keep them up with a shoelace. So what better than a hand woven belt that I made to keep my jeans up. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you have tips and tricks or directions to point me on my ankle weaving journey and education, feel free to do so. Any suggestions of what I might make or try next would be appreciated. And thanks for watching. Bye.